running probably a Microsoft system unless you have an Apple, laid off over 5,000 people. Caterpillar laid off 22,000 people with right now another 5,000 ready to be laid off. That'll be 27,000 layoffs at Caterpillar. Again, a United States icon company. Citigroup over 74,000. Bank of America over 35,000. Now, a concern that we've had certainly in the United States is that while Bank of America and Citibank are laying off thousands of people, they did share in that 18 billion in bonuses that were given out among many of the CEOs. There's some issues that we have got to address in the United States. Those kind of things cannot happen. I'm certainly for bonuses when you make money, but when you're losing money, no, and not with the government's money that was intended to be used for loans to help small businesses and other people. So that's certainly a major issue. Interestingly enough, if you look at the uh, at a, a survey of people who you admired most or companies, you know, four or five years ago, bankers were always at the top. And again, I was a banker for seven years, so I can say that made me feel good. If you look at some of the bankers in the United States and how they're viewed today, they're at the bottom because of these kind of things happening. General Motors, 34,000 people laid off. Hewlett Packard, 25,000. This is scary, folks. AT&T, 17,000. DHL, 15,000. Starbucks, they're in trouble. 12,000 layoffs. Chrysler, over 12,000. Wells Fargo Bank, 11,000. And the list goes on. We've never seen this type of things happening in the United States since the Great Depression. Dell, again, I have a Dell computer. 8,900 jobs. Citigroup, again, 59,000. Ecola, 15,2. Wachovia, 11,250. Sony, a Japanese company now, 8,000. HSBC, 1,350. And PepsiCo, 3,300. Now, these numbers were a few weeks ago, and I'm sure they've gone up since that point. Now, is that scary? It's absolutely extremely scary. Now, in 2008, 2.9 million people lost their jobs. That's the most job loss since 1945. Yes. Oh, okay. If you do have a question, please stop me at any time. 1.9 million of those jobs were lost in only four months. And that's scary. 471,224 people were laid off as of February. And it's predicted this year will even be worse than last year. Now, here's something that's scary. There's a prediction that over 50 million jobs, 50 million jobs will be lost worldwide in 2009. It's not just the United States, it's worldwide. I know here in Nicaragua you've had layoffs. Some of the banks that I talked to on, on Tuesday have had layoffs. But 50 million people may lose their jobs in 2009. That's, that's scary. That's scary. Now, let's look at some facts here from the FDIC. This is the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. These are right from their quarterly reports. Asset quality problems continue to depress earnings. They realize that the assets that banks are holding, that means the mortgages, are not good. And they realize that appraisals were inflated so that the values that they think they have are not there. Quarterly loss provisions surpass $50 billion. They keep reserving more and more monies for reserve for loan losses because they know the losses will continue to occur. This is the FDIC. And incidentally, the FDIC is now asking the federal government for funding because they're hurting. They're needing additional funding. That's scary. Asset quality indicators continue to deteriorate. The full year net income was $16.1 billion which is the lowest since 1990, and provision for loan losses doubled er in earlier years because they're trying to reserve enough money to cover the bad loans that are coming out. Not just mortgage loans, but business loans, personal loans, and credit card loans. I'll tell you a story in a few minutes ago that a good banker friend of mine was telling me that will scare you about credit cards. Credit cards are something we haven't really talked a lot about in the United States. That will be another big issue that will be coming up very shortly. When you lose your job, remember... You probably can't make the house payment, you probably can't make the car payment, and you sure will not be able to make the credit card payment. Some of those rates are over 31%. Also, the FDIC said their loan loss rate rose to a 17-year high. Banks are writing off a lot of bad loans. Just a comment, I'm on the hospital board in our local community, 
And we're seeing that our charity care and our write-offs are soaring. Right now, when you visit our emergency room in our hospital, we collect about 22% of what we bill. We're feeling the same thing that the banks are feeling. Our reserve for bad debts is going up, up, and up. We're trying to reserve enough to cover those bad debts. And they just keep going up. And that's in the hospital industry. Same thing we're seeing in the banking industry. The second quarter last year's earnings were 87%. Let me say that again. The second quarter of 2008 were 87% below a year earlier. It's a pretty, pretty dramatic figure. And net charge-offs were the highest since 81. The industry then, fourth quarter, now this is the fourth quarter of 2008, posted a $26.2 billion quarterly loss. It deteriorated very quickly in 2008. Folks, the banks are in trouble. And I will show you some charts in a moment that will really, I think, get your attention. It got my attention when I looked at them. Again, nine bank failures in the fourth quarter of 2008 was the highest in 15 years. And remember, we're tracking well ahead of last year, this year already, with 17 failures. There's only one good indicator, and, and, and so we got to look at something good. The net margins, that's the spread between their earning assets and their cost of funds, actually went up from about 3.37, or from 3.35 to about 3.37. So a small increase in their margins. It is. The cost of funds drop, and their margin goes. So, you know, this is the FDIC reporting this, but you're right. They didn't say that in the report, but that's true, because they're getting free money, therefore the cost of funds drop. And most of the funds were dispersed in the fourth quarter. Absolutely. That should be the indicator going into the January February Absolutely. And then, of course, they don't say that in the report, but you're absolutely right. But that's the only good thing in the whole FDIC quarterly report. But again, it was because of TARP monies. Now, what else have we been hearing a lot about? Uh, you know, of course, Citibank and Bank of America, they're international banks. They've been making a lot of loans to Dubai and other countries. Uh, and there's been a lot of criticism. Are they using TARP monies? But, you know, how can you s decide, is it, a tar is it TARP monies or is it our money? When it all goes in one pool, it's kind of difficult. But that's another criticism banks have been having, and it will continue, I think. You know, let's make sure we're taking care of our people first, because I'll tell you, there are no business loans or personal loans right now in the United States. It's almost impossible. I'll talk to you in a minute. You have to have about a 700 credit rating to even be, for anybody to even talk to you. Used to, if you had a 550, you were fine. Let me tell you one thing, too, before I go on. During the mortgage uh, boom, and I'm really being serious about this. Do you know what the major criterion was to get a mortgage loan? If you were breathing. That's right. If you were in your casket and hadn't been buried, you might be considered. I'm serious. Folks, if you're breathing, you got a loan. Seriously. Seriously. Uh, but today, it's, it's almost impossible to get a loan. Just money. Yeah. Well, it should be. It should be, and that's what, that's what they're looking at right now. If the money was given for one reason. It was given to make loans to businesses, to individuals. Where did it go? What was it, about $18 billion went for bonuses, uh, which should never have happened. And, and I can't believe the CEOs and the boards, they, they had to know better than that. So sooner or later, the money's going to come through the population? That's right. That's right. It would have to at some point. At some point, it should. That's right. Uh, also, if you look at the average net interest margin at community banks did fall, and the full year's earnings, again, were 18-year lows. So, again, these are right from the FDIC quarterly reports. Folks, it's tough right now in the United States. Now, let me mention this, too. When I was doing this presentation on Tuesday, one of the bankers said, I may ask you a question. You talked about, you know, to get a loan, you had to be breathing, and there was a lot of things that were probably not legal that happened. Will there be any ramifications for this? A good friend of mine, and this has not been in the, in the news media, and you won't read this anywhere, but a good friend of mine, I was on his dissertation committee, and he's one of only three special agents for the FBI that has a doctorate. And he said, Ricky, my next job is I'm starting to take a loan, and I'm going to take loans, I'm going to run that loan all the way back down to who originated it, and there will be some people going to jail. It will happen, and it should happen. I don't think it should be, I think it should be boards of to allow this to happen. Now, hey, I'm on the board of directors at our hospital, and if we are not, uh, if we don't do what's called due diligence and do our job, we're like Rick, and this is a guy who's getting ready to do the investigation. So there will be some ramifications of this coming. Now, how many people will be involved? I don't know, but it should be a lot. 
Uh, reserve coverage of non-current loans uh, decline. The reserve.